Um, welcome to the planning and zoning meeting for the city of Smyrna. We don't normally walk in this late, so my apologies. We we'll get ramped up 30 seconds behind. Uh, this is uh, the planning and zoning meeting for the city of Smyrna for November 12, 2018, 6 p.m. This meeting's called to order. Uh, if you would, please turn off all your electronic devices as they interfere with our electronic equipment. Um, for those who join us for the first time, this meeting is conducted much like a council meeting. As such, each application will include a presentation from city staff followed by a question and answer session between staff and the board. Um, when all the questions have been satisfied, uh, we'll have the applicant present their case and answer any questions. Once all those questions have been satisfied, we'll um, have an opportunity for the mass audience to come out and speak in favor of or opposition to this application. <laughs> Earl, you're going to be the chairman from now on. Um, we would just ask that you come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and sign the sign-in sheet at the podium. I'm sorry, guys. It's a dreary Monday, and we're just going to make as much fun out of this as possible. All right. The first item on the agenda is 2018-34. It's a uh, zoning application Z180015. This item is to be tabled to the December 10th, 2018 Planning and Zoning Board meeting at the request of the applicants. Can I get a – we've got a motion for Mr. Rice to table. A second, Ms. Harrington, back from vacation. All in favor, please vote. Uh, the motion to be tabled. Somebody's not voting. It's got to add it up for me. They don't let me count anymore. There we go. Um, vote uh, to be tabled is approved 6 0. All right. Um, the only other item on our agenda. 2018-420 application on our agenda rather is uh, zoning application Z18-016. This is rezoning from R20 to uh, R12 conditional for the development of 19 single family homes at a density of 2.47 units per acre. This is a 7.68 acres in land lot 331. Um, also known as 10 Rebel tra Trail. The applicant is O'Dwyer Properties. Mr. Martin. Would you like to give us the background, please? All right. Uh, this zoning request is an annexation, rezoning, and zoning amendment all wrapped in one request. Um, I'll clarify what all that means in a in a few slides for you. Uh, but the applicant is O'Dwyer Properties. Uh, you guys will obviously hear this tonight. Um, you tabled it last meeting to give them an, an opportunity to finish their tree plan. They've done that. Um, from your recommendation tonight, they'll have 30 days and they'll be before uh, mayor and council on December 17th for a final decision. Um, the property is 10 Rebel Trail. It's approximately seven and a half acres. Uh, it's located in Ward 7. Um, a majority of the property is zoned R12 conditional within the city. Um, two acres of the property is located in Cobb County currently and has a zoning in Cobb County of R20. So the applicant is requesting to annex that property into the city, rezone it to R12, and then add it to the previously zoned property R12 and modify that plan. So there's one vacant single family home out there right now. Um, they're proposing to add 19 new single family homes. And uh, basically the zoning is R20 to R12 conditional for those changes. Um, the subject property has a future land use designation of low density residential. Um, they are not proposing to change that density since the, the density for the overall site is uh, 2.47, which is under the three uh, units per acre uh, cap for low density residential. And as you can see, to the north in Cobb County, the, the future land use is low density residential to the east 
is moderate density residential, which that's um, three units to 4.5 units per acre. And then to the south is a mixture of medium high where the apartments are located and then low density residential where the single family is located. And to the west is low density residential for Cobb County. Just give you a little background on the subject property. In 2009, this property was part of a larger rezoning in the area. For this particular section, um, the highlighted area is delineating what was annexed and rezoned as part of zoning case Z06-009. It, um, it was rezoned from R20 to R12, uh, conditional for 14 single family homes at a density of 2.78 units per acre. And you can see the lot layout within the, the topographical map. And you know, it's 14 lots around a short road and a, and a cul-de-sac. With this request, um, they are acquiring a m most of that property that was rezoned in 2006 and then adding additional property. This highlighted area is just delinea delineating what is currently involved in this request. So they cut out a portion of um, property that was part of the initial request and that's on a, the northwestern port of, part of the property. The current zoning request is a proposal to add 2.26 acres to the previous zoning. Um, the request deals with the zoning change from R20 to R12 conditional, and then to modify that um, plan from 14 lots to, to 19 lots. So it's an, an addition of five lots to the previously approved plan. And I'll show you that new site plan in the next slide. This is the proposed site plan, and I'll walk you through the site to orient you towards uh, the relevant features within the plan. Uh, there's a deceleration lane along Cooper Lake Road. They're proposing a 50-foot public right-of-way through the site onto a, a cul-de-sac. This is the location of the proposed detention facility for the project. And this is the proposed open space, roughly two acres in size. This is the limit of the 100-year stream buffer along Nickajack Creek. For this development, they're proposing a 13-foot front setback, a 5-foot side and a 20 foot rear. These were the setbacks that were established for uh, zoning case Z06-009. So we we're just there just asking to roll those setbacks over to this development and keep it consistent with what was already zoned. And then with this request, um, they're seeking uh, five variances, the first being a lot size reduction from R12, or from 12,000 square feet down to 6,000 square feet, a lot width reduction from 85 feet to 65, a front setback reduction 35 feet to 13, interior side from 10 to five, and a rear setback from 30 to 20. Here are the proposed home elevations that they're planning to build out there. Pictures of the subject property. A view down Cooper Lake Road, north and south. And then you got Woodbridge Crossing, which is in the upper right-hand corner, which is a single family subdivision across uh, Cooper Lake Road from the property. And then you have the Cove, which is a townhome subdivision that is immediately to the south across the railroad tracks along Cooper Lake Road. Community development is recommending approval of the proposed annexation and rezoning and 
zoning amendment um, for 19 single family homes at 2.47 units per acre uh, with the following conditions. And most of these conditions and the special conditions are carryovers from um, the 2006 case. So I'll highlight them for you as we go through them. But standard conditions from section 1201, except for number two, eight, and 17. The rest of them deal with uh, the composition of the homes, requirements for HOA documents, open space requirements, stormwater management, no burning of debris on underground, underground utilities, traffic improvements, street lights, roadway improvements, and landscaping uh, requirements. Then we roll into special conditions, and 16 requires a minimum floor area for the home of 2,200 square feet. 17 establishes the, the front setback requirements. Uh, 18 deals with the minimum lot size uh, and establish that at 6,000 square feet. Uh, 19 deals with the minimum lot width at 65 feet. 20 uh, sets the maximum lot coverage at 35%. 21 um, requires the developer responsible to install water and sewer uh, per Cobb County water system. 22. Uh, deals with trees during the, the grading process. 23 requires a stormwater management facility be located on its own lot. 24 ties the approval of the zoning to the site plan submitted and 25 ties the zoning of the property to the elevation submitted. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you, Rusty. Uh, any questions for Mr. Martin? Rusty, can, can you tell me, um, We've got the stormwater detention in the middle. Mm -hmm. So this property I've walked at is very sloped in the back. So that means we're gonna have a lot of runoff into Nickajack Creek from the road as well as the lots on the very back that you're annexing in. Is that correct or incorrect? They're gonna have to complete a hydrology study of the site and they're gonna have to show how that water is gonna get from each lot to the detention facility. On top of that, they're required to produce a 10% a reduction from the current undeveloped state. So they'll evaluate the lots and evaluate the final grading and, and show that the water is going from those lots to the detention facility or is leaving the lots at a rate that's 10% less than what it is today. So. I can't answer that question t for you right now because they haven't completed the hydrology study. But they're just showing that they are acknowledging that they do have to meet stormwater management requirements and they're providing an area for that facility. Yeah, I've been contacted by a number of Vinings Estates um, homeowners who are very concerned because Nickajack Creek is already flooding in that area as well. They, I mean, they're going to look upstream. They're going to assess what's going on upstream and assess what's going on downstream, and uh, they'll have to abide by the city requirements for developing the site. And have they considered trying to move the entrance closer to Woodbridge? So, I mean, it's the traffic backs up every morning at schools in session from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. all the way to the entrance of Vinings Estates, Woodbridge, the Cove, all of that. So I didn't know if. Um, the city engineers looked at the, at the entrance and besides requiring them to provide a site distance study to make sure there's adequate site distance either way on Cooper Lake Road, I think he's okay with the, the location of the entrance because it's far enough away from the Woodbridge Crossing entrance. I don't think you could get a cro perpendicular to the Woodbridge Crossing entrance with on their property right now. A lot of speeding on that road too. Any other questions? No. All right, thank you, Mr. Martin. Oh. Well, he wants to make, he's, gonna, he's got a presentation. Yeah. All 
All right, at this time, I'd like to ask the applicant to come forward, state your name, address for the record. Tell us a little bit about your plan. Perfect. If you break the computer, you bought it. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> Hope for the best then. Yeah. Um, my name is Jordan Tench. I'm the land development manager at O'Dwyer Properties. Um, I just want to go through a you know, brief presentation. Just kind of, I think Rusty did a great job talking about the property, but I want to add a couple other things to it. Um, I know I'm trying to make this, this brief, but hopefully I can answer some questions as well afterwards if you have any. Um, so I first thought it'd be important to say, you know, who is O'Dwyer Properties? Um, we've done a lot of work, work in Smyrna. Hopefully you've seen us around. Uh, we are an award-winning Atlanta home builder. We are local. Uh, we really only work in the Atlanta area. Uh, Mr. O'Dwyer has been in business for 25 years through the ups and the downs, through the same, th same company. So that's obviously something we're very proud of. I mean, we want to be around for a long time, so we try and stand behind our work in any area we work in. Um, we are a semi-custom home builder, so if you saw some of the elevations, and I'll kind of run through those a little bit more at the end, um, you know, we want to make sure we bring good quality to, to this area, and we have seen quite a bit of, um, we've done dozens of, of subdivisions here. We've seen that we've brought good quality and also good um, residents to the area. We think that really helps out. Um, we're also proud to be Energy Star rated. There's very few home builders in the area that are. Um, so that's just one of the things that we can add to the um, overall uh, clients that come in. Um, the property, again, we did a quick background. I'll give a couple, couple things to touch on. It, it is a weird um, area where we're kind of putting different things together. So um, I just want to mention that it is a combination of, of two main properties. One that was previously zoned for the 14 smaller houses, and then the annexation from Cobb County. Um, we're really trying to make it one concurrent um, property that feels like a nice neighborhood. And that's really the reason that we looked at adding the extra piece. Um, this property has actually sat uh, since it was zoned. The, it was zoned as kind of a master area where you have across the street and up north was all zoned together. This piece has kind of sat for a while. So we were able to come up with a plan to actually make this into something we think is, is going to be very good for the area. Um, it is surrounded by some subdiv subdivisions, Nick Jack Creek and the railroad. Um, just want to kind of point that out. You know, one of the things we think is very good with this property is that it does have some buffers around it. Um, the creek itself adds a good buffer. Uh, we also have the railroad that adds another buffer onto it. And it really is kind of pocketed in there. So we think, again, we're going to add a quite a bit of value into this area. You can also see across the, um, the street of the property that that is the houses that it was actually zoned for. So again, they're much smaller, whereas in, we're proposing a little bit larger, larger homes. Um, Talking about the site plan, uh, from our aspect, I think you brought up uh, some very good points about it. Um, two things that we've been requested to look at uh, prior to Marin Council is the uh, hydro study and also the uh, uh, site distance as well. We've looked at the entrance locations a couple of different areas. And for this property, this is really the only place that it fits properly. Um, and that's really to get a good um, topo fall from, from front to back. Um, we think that the stormwater management is adequate as a current size, but we do have to look into that. I mean, that's, um, complete honest answer on there. We've not looked at the details of um, the hydro on that area. And if it does not work, we will make sure it, it meets all the city requirements before we go forward with it. Um, we also do like the site that it does have quite a bit of open space. Um, and then uh, tree preservation as well. Rusty already showed you the 14 lots that were there. Um, one of the things with, with this, with the tree preservation, is that with two acres of open space, we think that gives a good feel for the um, residents that will live there. Um, we also have the buffer that, again, you can't touch, so they're going to be very, very wooded to the back of those lots. Uh, we do have a requirement to do replacement of three to four trees per lot. Um, and then we're trying to do minimal clearing around the perimeter. That just really is going to add a nice uh, visual feel you drive into it. It's kind of tucked in there. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention, so uh, we think all the conditions have been uh, well thought out and, and um, kind of well detailed by Rusty. Uh, we did have one concern with the 35% lot coverage. And uh, it really comes down to trying to build the quality homes that we would like. Um, with this 19 lot subdivision, uh, right now with that 35% lot coverage, we would be probably inhibiting about half the lots to be able to build this type of product on there. Uh, we don't really want to move to a smaller product as we're looking for a um, higher price point in this area. And we also want to offer one of the other requirements is a 2,200 square foot home. We want to offer that, but also larger. We typically offer kind of the high 2000s in terms of a, a um, home square footage. And with that lot coverage, we believe we're going to be somewhere around 40 to maybe 45% um, with, with a majority of our lots. Um, there is several lots. There's five or six lots that are much larger um, that have no problem. But that's our one request is uh, 
that, um, that variance on the uh, lot coverage. So again, kind of wanted to go through some of the houses, and these, these are Smyrna houses. These are what we build here. Um, again, we, with being semi-custom, we like to start with the template and then let people kind of do what they want um, in terms of uh, really a craftsman type, type house um, that we think fits the area very well. And you see we do a mix of, of materials on the front. Um, with, with these houses, uh, most of them will be front entry, but we have a couple side entry options. Um, just to give you a different feel. We do different porches, and, and we think that kind of adds the value. Um, we just completed uh, one called Tackett Farms on Concord Road, if you guys have, have passed by it. Um, so that was one of the subjects. We did 36 lots out there. And then we currently have another one on North Cooper Lake Road right now called Maple Shade. So um, that's my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, see if there's any questions for the applicant. I have one question. You mentioned the uh, coverage moving from 35 to 45. How many lots did you say would be involved? So, and that's, um, see, I kind of wrote it Can down. we put that map back up now, Rusty? I have to leave that to you. Site plan? Yeah, the site plan. Thank you. So um, to fit all of our product, and that means from the smallest house to the largest house we build, um, right now five lots fit, fit them all, no problem. Five. Five. Um, if we, we cut out about half of our product, um, we have another eight houses that uh, would be limited by those, and then the remaining six don't really fit our product, um, and that's really for the maximum lot coverage aspect. So there's, there's eight compromised lots, as I call them, about half, half product, and there's six lots that are, um, would have to be a smaller product. What are the sizes of the, of the houses you're talking about? In, in which way? So typically about 27 to 3,000 square feet is what we would build in this Right, area. but you just said that, you've, that um, the breakdown you, you just gave us. Mm -hmm. You have um, a certain number of your houses will fit on those lots. Mm -hmm. What size are those houses, and, and what, how does that square footage transition to uh, not fitting on the lot, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. So um, typical house is um, 50, 50 by 50 as kind of the, the box you look at. Okay. So that's going to be um, uh, from a 6,000 square foot lot. And we, don't, we only have one that's in the 6,000s. Most lots are 7,000. That's going to put you right around 35% without the driveway. Um, our largest house is going to be 56 by 52, um, and that's the one that fits on five of the lots. And then our smallest house is uh, it's actually 52 by 44, um, just kind of give you an idea what the, the range is. So um, we typically put a 50 by 50 box on there and see if it fits, but with this case, we'll have some lots that are going to be um, as I say, kind of compromised. Right, but what does that transition to or translate to in terms of uh, actual finished square footage? Oh, that's what, when I said the 27 to 3,000 is actual finished um, All of footage. them in that, that, those categories. Very close. We, can go, we can go up to 34 if they end up doing uh, a third story or a uh, uh, breakfast nook. Yeah. Um, but that's all depends upon the customer. No, actually... Actually, that's where we're having the, yeah. uh, the best case. Those lots, if you kind of see, and um, it's a little bit difficult, but those are actually some of the bigger lots. Um, it's, the, um, it's the lots right next to the stormwater detention on both sides are actually the, uh, the compromised ones. And that's part of, part of because of the, um, the, the, the naked jack buffer as well. So um, we don't want to go so deep that we have issues. And, and realistically, a lot of the coverage is, comes down to the driveways. Um, adding that extra driveway for impervious does, does impact us. So uh, we can look at that to, to kind of mitigate it. But we do think if we were able to get a little bit more or even more on half the lots, we think it would add for a better product and better variation. One thing we don't like doing, and um, if you've ever been in a community, we do not like having similar houses next to each other. So we like to have vary throughout the community. And uh, any way we can do to give ourselves more ability to have variation makes the community look much better. And when did you figure out you needed 
a variance on this? Well, we actually didn't know. The original uh, zoning did not have a um, uh, lot coverage. So we, we actually did not realize until we got the staff report. So when was that? Uh, Friday. Okay. And when did you ask for this variance? Tonight? Just first time? I let Rusty know, yeah, uh, okay. this morning. <laughs> okay. And when do you, if it's approved, when do you think you would do the hydrology study? Uh, the requirement from the staff report was that the hydrology study is due before mayor and council. Okay. So, so you'll, know the answer. you'll know the answer. You'll know which lots are, are impacted. So they'll know, they'll know which lots they need the variances for and that kind of thing at that point. All right. Any other questions? Uh, I have one for community development. If this was um, originally, would you, would the staff be supportive of this change in the uh, lot coverage? That's correct. Yeah, and I'm happy to do that. Um, and I have it here in front of me if we would like to list them. I just was, uh, thought we'd have a good discussion behind it. So the, the, the main ones that uh, 6, 7, 8, and 15, 16, 17. And again, that's taking out the ones that I will have some, as again, I call them compromise lots, means they fit my product. They just only fit about half what we offer. Right. So, um, the, the big request is on those, on those six lots. You said it's 6, 7, 8. Seven, eight, and then uh, 15, 16, and 17. 15, 16, and 17. That's no better than what's in front of me. So in Smyrna, um, we've started out in, in the, the mid 400s, but currently we're in fives to sevens is our typical price point. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All right, Jordan, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. No, thank you, guys. Yep. And then you want me to sign in here, right? Yeah. That'd be fantastic. You don't have to put all the information down. All right, this is a public hearing at this time. We'd like to uh, give an opportunity to anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to this application. Do you guys ride together? Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys sat on opposite sides of the room because I was going to ask you to balance it out anyway. Anyway, sorry. It's my only chance to do stand up. Um, let the record let the record show there there is a, no public comment. Got it. All right. Any further discussion on this application? Questions, concerns regarding lots six, seven, eight and the other three, which I did not write down. Somebody's going to have to detail that for me. 15, 16, and 17, it's that whole counting thing that gets me. All right. All right. Um, in the absence of further discussion, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion, please. Mr. Monroe, is it you? I'd like to make a motion to approve with the conditions that... Um, um, planning and zoning had put on the um, applicant as stands. So we got a motion to approve with conditions. Mr. Monroe, do we have a second? Mr. Campo. All right, would you please vote?
The motion is approved five to one with Ms. Harrington in opposition. You want to you want to call out those lots for the for that additional variance? Is that what? Okay. For a point of clar clarification, Mr. Monroe, can you redo that motion? All right. The motion the motion was to uh, approve and not drop the the square footage to 35 percent so you have a motion with the except here's a question you want to which includes the 35 35 percent we still have to clear you'll have to clarify the the balance of that getting 35 to 45 when you have further details with hydrology instead of us putting a random approval on it. is that all right yeah. the, all right, so yeah. with staff recommendations. Yeah, because if, if we right. approve just those Thank six. You. Thank you for that clarification. Is every, let's, uh, do you want to re-vote for that then? No, no we're good. We're good. On that hydrology. Okay. All right, so we have a motion. Uh, it's seconded and approved five to one again with Ms. Harrington in opposition. Yeah, as is, as is. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for the clarification. All right. Um, the last item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from the October 8, 2018 Planning and Zoning Board meeting. Are the board members in possession of the minutes? Are there any changes that need to be made? If not, can we get a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. By, a second, Mr. Monroe. Uh, all in favor of approval of the minutes? Minutes are approved. Minutes are approved, or are they? Six, zero. All right. Any uh, further discussion this evening? Okay. Good luck with your project, guys. Uh, take care of Nickajack Creek. It's going to be pretty vigilant uh, watching over that, that little waterway there. It's pretty popular in this town. All right. And any further discussion? No further discussion. This meeting is adjourned at 630 Three.